Hello everyone, Jonathan here from Unity Game Programming for Beginners, Wild Cockatiel Games. And in this video, I'm going to show you a few quick ways of how you can cause a delay in code. Now, why might you want to cause a delay in code? Uh, gameplay mechanics, maybe you have two bits of code that are running at the same time, and you as a human knows which one needs to run first, but the computer doesn't. Any number of reasons, but uh, really, let's just get to it. Here's how you can cause some delays. So in this game, we have a paddle which has a ball bouncing on it basically forever and just causing this paddle tons and tons of stress. So we feel really bad for the paddle. We want to just destroy this ball. Um, but we don't want to destroy it so quickly because that's not the point of the video. So how can we destroy this ball with a delay? Well, if we look in this script here, the gameplay manager, which is responsible for destroying the ball, we just have a little bit of code here which says destroy ball. Now. With the destroy command, it's actually really easy to cause a delay because there's already a way of causing the delay with destroy. All you have to do is after typing after the object you want to destroy, you put comma and then you put the time limit of how you want to destroy it. So let's say we want to destroy it after one and a half seconds, we would just write destroy ball one and a half seconds. Now if we go back into Unity and we hit play on the game, we can destroy ball and after one and a half seconds it disappears. Okay, but that's too simple. Let's show, and that only works if you're destroying an object. So let's get rid of this and just show you some other ways that you could destroy an object or do whatever you want. I'm using destroy as an example, but you can do basically whatever you want here. So another simple way of destroying an object is using the, inv or causing a delay, is using the invoke method. So all we have to do here is we type invoke and now what we do is we do open and close bracket and semicolon and we type the name of a method that we want to call. So I haven't created it yet, so I'm just going to write uh, void void uh, destroy delay and now we're going to put in here destroy ball. And now in here, we're going to call this method, and we're going to call it by typing in quotation marks the name of the method. So destroy delay. And here, we are going to put our delay time. So again, I'm going to put one and a half seconds. Uh, but now, you notice there's no, there's no delay here when we're actually destroying it. There's a delay with the invoke. So now, if I run it, we should have the same effect, but it's done differently. So I click destroy, and one and a half seconds goes by, and the ball gets destroyed. So perfect, that is, and obviously I don't have to destroy the ball in here, I could do whatever I wanted and it would cause that delay. Okay, now here is another way of causing delays, and we, instead of writing the word void, we can call this I enumerator, uh, so I capital I E numerator, you don't really have to know how to spell it because Unity will do that for you, but in order to and what an I enumerator is, is it's a special type of method that lets us call for delays within the code within it. We can't do that in a normal method that just has the word void written, but if we use an I enumerator, we can. Now, we have to call this I enumerator in a different way, and we do this by writing start coroutine, and then we use our brackets here, and we would write destroy, de whoops, destroy delay semicolon. So we would basically call this method the same way we would call any other method, except instead of writing uh, just the name of the method, we would write uh, start coroutine and then put the name of the method inside. Now, if I just ran it like this, it wouldn't do anything. It would actually give us an error. And that's because an I enumerator needs a to have a return. So what this means is we have to type in here yield return new these three words now we can say wait for seconds and in here we can put our delayed length so again let's put 1.5 f semicolon and now this should again have the exact same effect so if we click play oops except i did something wrong argument number one cannot return oh because I forgot my extra pair of brackets. We still have to call this like a method, so we have to have that extra pair of brackets in here. And if you spotted that before me, good job. So now if we hit play, we should again have the same effect, destroy ball, and after 1.5 seconds, it's going to disappear. So that's three very simple ways we can cause a delay in code. 
Um, and again, the neat thing about this is we can have more than one of these wait for seconds. So if we wanted to, I could do a second yield return new wait for seconds. Wait, type it correctly and then put 1.5 F again. And then we can just do a print statement saying method complete. So we can cause multiple delays within code within an, within an I enumerator. So destroy ball, 1.5 seconds goes, the ball is destroyed, and then in here console it says method complete. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to show you one more bonus thing we can do with causing delays, and I'm just going to go over to a different project here. So I'm just going to pause the video and be right back. Okay, so I'm just, I opened up another project here, and I wanted to show you a delay in real time. This is another little game I've been working on called 13 Days of Zombies. And watch what happens when my player dies here. Come on, zombie, kill him faster. Okay, so we have some death music, and then the You Died screen appears right after the death music finishes playing. So that's kind of a cool little effect we can do. And the way we do this is by going into the code, and right here on this line where I invoke my method with a delay, rather than just typing the uh, time in seconds, I can actually type in audio source dot clip dot length, which is basically saying invoke this method after the audio source uh, that I'm referring to has finished playing. So get its length, and then after that point, then we call our UI controller, which uh, calls for the game over screen. So that's just a cool little in use thing you can do, and uh, that way you don't have to think about how long something's going to last for. You can just call it for the length of its clip. Anyways, that's all I have for this video. I hope you learned something. Please let me know if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.